and uh, decided rheumatoid arthritis would be uh, most apropos. <clears throat> so RA, another one of these autoimmune diseases, they keep coming up, don't they? Chronic systemic autoimmune disease, inflammation in the joints, you get deformities, disabilities. Usually you see some death within 10 to 20 years, though I've got patients that have had this for many more than that. So I wonder if that's an average or where that number came from. But it seems like all my, my patients are living longer than 10 to 20 years with rheumatoid. Uh, etiology unknown. Genetic, environmental factors, not sure. Gradual onset of uh, symmetric arthritis of small joints is usually one of the main symptoms for diagnosing. Pain, stiffness, and swelling, of course. Finger and toe joints, very common. Wrist joint, uh, other joints like ankles. Other symptoms kind of come along with this. Some patients will get the dry eyes, excuse me, pericarditis, episcleritis, scleritis, things around the eye areas, swelling, vasculitis, spleen will swell up. Uh, you'll get some fatigue, anemia even. 1% of the adult population seems to have uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I thought that was kind of a large number, actually. That's uh, 1 in 350, right? Uh, age... 30 to 55 um, is most common uh, onset of this. Women are two to three times more likely than men are to have rheumatoid. Uh, genetics uh, seem to play a role, but not necessarily in the same family. There are many genes that may play a role, so it could spread out to some degree. Usually they look for four to seven signs of uh, these various symptoms to have a clinical diagnosis. So uh, having joint stiffness in the morning, soft tissue swelling for of three or more areas for six weeks, uh, swelling of the uh, proximal and, and middle uh, phalanges joints uh, for more than six weeks, symmetrical swelling, both sides, for six weeks or longer, rheumatoid nodules specifically, so little bumps growing here and there, and uh, positive RA factor, 85% of patients seem to have that on a blood test. And osteopenia uh, also in the joints. So you're getting some, uh, some withering away of bone. All kinds of possible pulses here. But typically, uh, people will have these kind of wiry, hesitant pulses, maybe slippery. Um, abdominal palpation will vary pretty significantly. You don't necessarily see any zones uh, showing up in particular. As far as treatment goes, uh, physical therapy is used, anti-inflammatory drugs, of course, disease-modifying agents. There's all kinds of new drugs coming out for the rheumatoid factors. Um, eye drops, of course, if there's eye involvement. Uh, weight loss seems to take some pressure off the joints, which improve those symptoms. Uh, and, of course, surgery. Uh, if it's real bad, they'll you know be cutting and rearranging fingers and toes, uh, which that never seems to turn out that well, as far as I can tell, on my, my patients. They're looking for low impact exercises, range of motion exercises, water-based possibly, heat and hydrotherapy are beneficial of course, and then uh, relaxation techniques. So uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, what have you, a little bit of gentle yoga maybe, chair yoga possibly. NSAIDs and steroids are pretty common, supplements like vitamin D and calcium if they're on the steroids, uh, disease modifying drugs. Uh, and aromatic drugs uh, like hydroxychloroquine, made famous recently, methotrexate gold salts, I thought was, wow, back in the old days, the gold salts, huh? Anybody have any patients on gold salts? That's interesting. As far as channels go, we're just mirroring joints, basically, because this is usually a jointy-related um, disease. Yeah, it's interesting. I thought gold salts was an interesting uh, medication. I guess they uh, crystallize and grow. They s somehow grow uh, crystals on gold and uh, create these these mineral gold combinations that um, I, I guess it's an infusion um, is my understanding, but uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, someone.
<clears throat> channels uh, and images, we're just going to kind of mirror up exactly as we can. So if there are uh, specific fingers involved or specific toes, we just match those up and we needle exactly joint for joint and we go medial, medial, lateral, lateral, distals, distal, right? So uh, some of the trickier stuff is trying to figure out where to go um, uh, with the opposable thumb. Otherwise, uh, if it's, you know, the medial side of this index finger on that most distal joint, then we go to uh, opposite foot. We find that, we find that joint, right? We find that joint and we look for that exact spot and it's the side that's nearest to the thumb. So we needle the side that's nearest to the big toe and we just find that little spot on the joint and we just put a little tiny needle in there, zip, and that's it for that joint space. Now, I haven't seen uh, differences in shapes. What I have seen is differences in pain level. So oftentimes, patients' uh, pain level changes. The ability to hold hold a, uh, a, um, a pen or be able to write uh, consistently without a lot of pain changes. Uh, the shapes... I haven't seen change yet. Uh, I, uh, theoretically, if the body is laying down bone and cartilage, you'd think it could reabsorb it. But uh, trying to convince <laughs> chemistry of the blood to do such reabsorbing, I haven't seen yet. Uh, if somebody's got a trick on that, that'd be that'd be a winner. Uh, so anyway, there it is. Best to prevent it, right? And how do we go about preventing things like rheumatoid arthritis? Well as we would prevent many other things. Diet again. So, uh, wrist joints, go to the ankle joints, that kind of thing. And if there is autoimmune, which we think there is with this rheumatoid, uh, treating the digestive tract as well. So you're going to see points in here uh, that are dealing with abdominal digestive system. We've got ba feng, ba xie, shang ba feng, shang ba xie, right? So it's going to, it's going to, um, basically what I'm just trying to tell you is we're going to mirror the exact locations. So I was just kind of trying to throw names out there that might get you to think a little bit about where we're at. So uh, Tanya, interesting question. So the ba xie points are kind of uh, here. I believe the shang ba xie are the ones above the knuckles. Is that correct? Anybody else? Thank you very much. Uh, same thing with the fungs, ba fungs, shang ba fungs, uh, above the knuckle joint versus below the knuckle joint. Yeah, that's my understanding as well. Um, but again, um, not so important. Now, uh, I do usually start with those either uh, shang ba xie or ba xie's. I do usually start with those versus uh, needling the individual joints of the fingers or toes uh, just because those are pretty tender and painful typically. So usually what I'll do is I'll, um, if people are having symptoms in a number of the fingers, I'll go to the foot and needle pretty much between each knuckle and try to get it back almost like a sancha, you know, back to the meeting of those metacarpals, metatarsals, depending on if you're hand or foot. Um, so they go in a little ways. I don't necessarily need them to go all the way back uh, to get the effect. We're not, we don't have to get like all the way into the sacrum kind of situation. Uh, but I'm trying to affect around that whole knuckle and increase the blood flow in that entire area so that it perfuses into the toes and fingers as well. That works about half the time. And then the rest of the time I have to go and get the individual joints medial, lateral, anterior, superior, uh, proximal, distal, etc. So we just go for the exact spots that we can, but uh, usually I'm in about half, one half to one soon on those. Um, and obviously on the joint spaces, we're just using like a little ear needle and just going in. They also make little tiny hand needles for uh, sujok, suji chim, hand acupuncture that you could use instead. Great. Uh, the stomach 36, 37, spleen 9, obviously treating that digestive area for the autoimmune piece to it. Uh, gallbladder 40, get kind of nice and into a joint space. So it might be good for treating kind of joints in general, even though it may not relate exactly to the joint you want. It's a nice place to get into a joint if you're having trouble with the joint you're working on. Uh, same thing with the small intestine joint point, SI joint point, which we showed you yesterday on uh, my lovely wife who let us do that to her. So uh, into the joint space there. Treats ankle, obviously, but it
you may treat kind of joints sort of all over. <clears throat> uh, spleen 5, stomach 41 is that a needle that gets threaded under the tibialis anterior tendon to stomach 41. <clears throat> uh, liver 3 to 4 area is uh, liver 3.5. Uh, that's another spot that might be useful, especially if we're talking about thumb areas, right? We'll get a little bit more into thumb here in a minute. That's a really common spot for the rheumatoid to set up shop. Uh, early on in the disease, spleen four is going to mostly correlate on that lung channel. So we'll t get a little more, a little deeper into uh, opposable thumb there. Uh, thank you, Marie, for your comments. <clears throat> Shorter lifespan, 10 to 20 years. Maybe that's what they meant, and I just mistyped it. Thank you for that. Herbal treatment wise, we've got uh, flex herbs. So there are numerous here. So there's a flex heat, a flex uh, CD, uh, and MLT. Uh, that's not multi-level therapy, right? MLT. <laughs> I should look that up, actually. I have the book with me, guys. <clears throat> Gardenia complex. Uh, they're using usually for the autoimmune uh, part of it, uh, as they have it described, and um, I'm using more of a uh, muscle ligament tendon. Yes, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, the leaky gut kind of uh, situation, I'm liking six gentlemen uh, type of formula modified. Uh, probiotics, definitely, and uh, running down, um, we talked about that quite at length yesterday for uh, like Crohn's. I kind of went through at length what to do for the, the digestive sort of component of <clears throat> autoimmune and how that may be causing attack of the joints. Vegetarian diets seem beneficial for these patients. Uh, rheumatoid uh, factor and uh, C-reactive protein seem to be reduced. Uh, higher intakes of meat increases the risk. Um, RA patients have higher levels of oxidized LDL. That's that good old oxidized LDL again. Elimination diets are a good way to figure out what the triggers are uh, for these patients. So <clears throat> allergenic foods seem to increase the cytokines and that inflammatory effect. Uh, baseline diet is uh, kind of eliminating the common allergens and then um, <clears throat> cutting out uh, dairy, corn, uh, meat, wheat, oats, rye, there's a whole list of things there that could be allergenic. And then you sort of add one back at a time after a period of maybe five, six, seven days. Uh, we might have a whole uh, relationship here. Yeah, so this comes from uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which was uh, this book, right? <clears throat> so in that book, they're talking about um, what exactly are we going to? Um, how deep do we do the Bashier points? Yeah, so those go in uh, an inch uh, or so, maybe less, half an inch. Just depends on the angle and what the joint is doing at the space. So sometimes we can get them in a little farther. Other times it's really tight uh, in that area. But brown rice seems to be the base, right? Cooked and dried fruits, cooked veggies, plain carbonated water, modest amounts of condiments, and then... Uh, for four weeks, so it's a four-week diet. Once uh, that has calmed down the allergic symptoms, uh, for the most part, if the patient seems to improve from that, then you slowly introduce each one of those foods uh, that seemed the most um, allergenic and use generous amounts each time. So you do one food every uh, couple of days and um, be taking a food diary so you can mark down what happens with each one, and uh, how that progression goes. Uh, Nancy, yes, uh, I think brown rice has the same action. In fact, all the rices, whether it's brown, white, maybe not uh, wild rice, being that it's not exactly a rice, it's more of a, of a seed. Uh, but um, yeah, brown rice, red, white, uh, I think black, purple, I think they're all going to have that same resistant starch bind 
that happens as they cool down once they've been cooked. So you get that uh, benefit of the resistant starch. Good question. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, brown rice. Great. That's what, usually what we're eating as well. Um, though we mix it up a lot with the red and purple. I do really like purple rice, actually. Uh, one uh, one uh, new uh, food every couple of days, uh, keeping track, um, and then uh, you add them back slowly, and uh, hopefully you figure out which one was uh, the biggest trigger uh, for each uh, person, and then they can just avoid that food, right? So that may make their life a little more complicated, but uh, um, much better than having rheumatoid arthritis, isn't it? So poor uh, nutrient status, poor... Um, antioxidant status is a risk factor for rheumatoid arthritis as long as well as um, having more carotenoids in the diet is beneficial so those good orange and yellow veggies uh, oil intake uh, diets low in omega-6 lessen the RA symptoms so careful on the omega-6s with your nuts and oils omega-3s and uh, GLA seem to be helpful RA is more prevalent in meat-heavy eaters. Also, autoimmune attack on animal proteins, uh, like a leaky gut type situation. So, saturated fat breaks down the intestinal wall. Uh, the the animal proteins kind of break through, and you get some kind of an endotoxemia where the toxic bacteria then the immune system reacts to that, and then reacts to us. And it's like a friendly fire uh, situation on autoimmune. And I think that's probably the case for almost all the autoimmune illnesses. So um, trying to repair the gut seems like a really important way to go with any, any autoimmune patient. And so I kind of stress this point to them. Other harmful meat proteins or compounds are uh, the omega-6s and uh, NEU5C is another uh, arthritic component that might be in there. <clears throat> 